Sure, my name is Narga Spaniasadi. I'm the CEO and founder of Bina Technologies. Uh, Bina Technologies is an early stage startup in Silicon Valley. We are innovating in the intersection of big data uh, and genomics. So, uh, you know, we are set to transform healthcare industry to make it really data driven and targeted and personalized. What we realized is that healthcare is very inefficient. There are billions of dollars every year lost in uh, unsuccessful treatments, especially on cancer. Only 25% of treatments are, uh, our patients are responding uh, to the treatments. And uh, one of the main reasons this is happening because is because this industry is not data driven and uh, doctors rely on their own experiments. So one of, the uh, one of the ways that healthcare industry is going to get disrupted is through the availability of data. Uh, one of the most informative pieces of uh, data is our DNA sequence and our genetic uh, configuration. Uh, in this graph, what you see is how the efficiency and the uh, throughput and the accuracy of DNA sequencing has been uh, exponentially improving over the last decade. And we have compared it to Moore's law that is very well known to your audience. This industry is actually uh, improving faster than the semiconductor industry. What used uh, to take us uh, billions of dollars about uh, 10 years ago is going to only cost about $1,000 this year. And what took about several years to do in 2001 is going to be achievable only in a single day. So what does it mean for us? It means that we are going to have an explosion of data size. Only one human DNA, one genome, is about half a terabyte of information. If you do a study that involves only 50,000 people, suddenly you are thinking about petabytes of information that you need to mine to find what are those patterns that are correlated with a disease or a treatment. So it's really a big data problem, especially when you put it in the context of someone's lifestyle, environmental factors, their family history. Uh, I believe this is the biggest big data problem we are facing. And it needs really disruption through scalable system, software, as well as analysis. Um, uh, processes to really understand the data. The very similar technologies that disrupted web and consumer and entertainment or financial industry can be applied to this industry and uh, results in much higher quality of life and uh, saving many lives here. Another particular problem about the infrastructure in our industry is that, as you know, healthcare is a very regulated space. We are dealing with very sensitive information. This is patient data. So in order to really uh, use the infrastructure and big data for these problems, we need to make sure that the data is secure and uh, stays uh, private and only for the patient uh, usage. So this is something that we need to address when we bring, we bring this type of technology to healthcare. So uh, we have a very compelling product that is addressing several of the infrastructure uh, challenges in this industry. Let's start with the first challenge, which is we want to uh, mine and analyze very large amounts of data and information in a very short amount of time. Because think about it, a cancer patient or a newborn that has ad been admitted to hospital, we need to get an answer in a very short amount of time, probably a couple of hours. And we need to process all the genomic information and even do data mining across many annotations and kind of treatment options. So when you think about this data intensive application, you need to parallelize it across many servers and nodes to do the processing. We started by looking at some of the popular methods in infrastructure like Hadoop. And what we realized is that Hadoop actually is built for a very simplistic view of the world. They have this map reduce you know, framework. You have all these parallel uh, processes, and then you, you kind of uh, integrate the results back in the reduce step. So this was not very useful for us because it is uh, usually used for offline processing and has a very simplistic view of the processes. In our case, we, had, we need to have a lot of concurrent processes and a lot of on-the-fly um, movement of uh, large uh, amounts of data and the dependency between all these processes were, were complex. So we came up with an alternative to Hadoop which is more scalable and is designed to target uh, data intensive applications when, uh, when uh, real time processing is the key. And it has actually applications way beyond genomics. You can apply it uh, to applications in security, sensor networks or financial analysis and beyond. 
The other problem that we um, solved is around uh, the transfer of the data. So this genomic information is being produced by DNA sequencing machines. Each run of a DNA sequencing machine can be terabytes of data. Most places do not have enough internet bandwidth to send that data right away to the cloud. So we came up with a hybrid architecture that has some part of it be on-premises and some part in the cloud. In the part that is uh, on-premises, we kind of push the compute back to where the data is. It acquired the data, do, uh, does some processing, and really reduce the data size thousand-folds before sending it to the cloud. So that intelligent breakdown of the computation and the place it needs to run has really helped with uh, kind of adoption of this technology in this space. The other innovation we have is around the security. So as we said, this data is very sensitive and hosting all the patient information on the cloud uh, is not yet easily acceptable by many players in the industry. So we are actively working on making sure the data is secure in the cloud, but at the same time with, a, with our hybrid architecture, we are really minimizing the amount of private information that is going to be sent to the cloud. So we encrypt the data, uh, we keep the clinical information and the per, uh, patient information on premises and only send the variations and what is needed for the aggregation and mining to the cloud. Uh, so this has been uh, three major innovations in the infrastructure part of our product. Our product of also has um, a lot of analysis and algorithms for data mining and machine learning and uh, kind of uh, interpretation of the genome that is built on top of our scalable infrastructure. Yes, I believe that there are many things that need to happen in order to transform in the uh, healthcare industry and make it uh, data driven. I want to talk about three of them today. Uh, one of them is the cultural barrier. So as we talk, healthcare is a very experimental science at the moment, and we need to make it data-driven. We need to educate all the doctors, oncologists, and the players in the market to start using data and web technologies. Uh, you will be surprised and shocked on how uh, the state of the art of software and data science is really behind in industry compared to web or consumer uh, industries. And I believe that we need to create new jobs in this market, people who understand data science as well as genomics and medicine in order to disrupt it. The second challenge I would like to talk about is around security. So we touched upon it briefly in the beginning that we are dealing uh, with very sensitive information in a very regulated uh, space. And uh, what we are realizing and observing, talking to the customers uh, from pharma to clinics to oncologists, we see that there's still a lot of barrier uh, to adopt cloud-based technologies. People are not comfortable with sending their data to the cloud or with even sharing their data sets with other scientists. And that's a huge problem because the only, other, the only way we can really understand and interpret the DNA is to put it in the, with uh, putting it in the context of many genomes and do this type of data aggregation. Uh, so from the technology standpoint, we need to do whatever we can to make sure the privacy and security of the data um, is really strong and uh, help with the adoption of the technology in this market. The third challenge I want to speak about uh, that needs to be overcome is around the accuracy of the analysis. So we are you know, dealing with life and death decision for the doctors when they look at a cancer patient, for example. It is not just like machine learning applying to an advertising or to a consumer app. It is really an important application and the accuracy, reliability and reproducibility of it is very important. Uh, and um, unfortunately, I have to share that the state of the art in accuracy and analysis is very poor in our space um, uh, at the moment. Uh, people run different analysis pipelines on the very same data set and they only get 50% overlap in the final results. So BINA is set to um, uh, really change this. Our vision is to define and create the standard of accuracy for this space to make sure it can play a role in real patient uh, scenario. At the moment, you see most of these activities happen in only science and academic institutions because it's not reliable enough to bring it to patient care. And that can happen through really um, intelligent ways of analysis of the data. <laughs>